Let's observe a moment of silence for all the fishes who died without oxygen in our fish ponds. A moment is over. Yeah. Yes, let's do this. No more fish death in our ponds. Namaste everyone, welcome back to another episode of Back to Earth. Today's topic is about fish culture and natural ponds. We will cover how to set up a natural pond, how to maintain it and how to convert your existing pond into a self-sustaining natural pond. Where oxygen levels are adequate and ammonia levels are very low. I have been seeing a lot of fish deaths occurring due to changes in water quality and lack of natural elements. To buffer these rapid changes. We will see how we can avoid this and reap success naturally via permaculture methods. So let's go. It is very sad to see all these posts in social media showing fish kills after a heavy rain. This can be due to the rapid flow of nutrients from rain and runoff accumulating in the ponds causing algal blooms and hence fish death. Look around us, we can see natural ponds and rivers and lakes do we see anybody taking care of them and maintaining them or doing tests for pH or ammonia levels no nature has its ways to reach an equilibrium by balancing out the item which is out of proportion in this case those are the fish so let's see the factors which can help us keep and maintain a natural pond in its full potential we are looking at four factors which determine the water quality. One, first is fish. The fish we are selecting must be suitable to the growing conditions of our pond. The location, area, depth of our pond, aim of our grow will all have to be considered while selecting the fish. Stocking densities can be consulted with fish breeders and experts from where you collect the fish seeds. Next are aquatic plants. Like our garden, a pond system is not complete without plants, be it floating plants like water lilies, lotus, asola, lemna, water lettuce, etc. We need a plant to maintain the water quality and to provide oxygen and to prevent growth of algae. The third one is soil. Do we really need soil in my artificial pond made with pond liner? Well, cannot blame you for that. There will be more questions as well, I know. Yes, we do need a substrate and soil is a readily and economically feasible option. It is eco-friendly as well considering the huge river rocks people are gathering and keeping. Just some sand taken in a bonsai pot will do the trick if you have a small pond. Four is bacteria. These are bacteria found in the soil and underwater clinging to rock surfaces and other substrates. Their life purpose is to cycle back the ammonia into plant absorbable nitrates. These four factors 
present in your pond in the right proportions will help you keep the natural pond healthy and teeming with life. Let us observe and learn about the nitrogen cycle so that we can put this into action. Fish wastes and other decaying matter in the pond then turns into ammonia which is toxic to fish as you know. This ammonia is converted by nitrosomonas bacteria into nitrites which in turn is converted into nitrates by nitrobacter bacteria. These nitrates can be absorbed by the plants. Plants thus produce food for themselves and also becomes part of the fish diet. As excess sunlight and ammonia is not present, algae is also eradicated, leaving our pond systems healthy and natural. If you are setting up a new pond, give it some time for the nitrogen cycle to kickstart itself. You can give aeration to jumpstart the process. When the fish, bacteria, soil and plants start doing their thing, the pond will become naturally into a state of equilibrium. Observe the changes happening in your pond and you will be able to understand when that equilibrium is reached. Once you constantly observe the pond, the water, the fish and their behavior, you will be able to understand when that equilibrium is reached. Once that equilibrium is reached, you may increase the number of fish population in your pond. Hope we can eradicate the usual issues in aquaculture by shedding light on the natural processes in a pond. May all of us fish enthusiasts be free from fish deaths and financial loss as well as loss of happiness from now on. Share this video to everyone so that we all can learn to catch fluctuations and ammonia levels naturally as much as possible. We are doing these videos to share the knowledge from our experiences and to gather more knowledge from much experienced people just like you. Knowledge should be shared with everyone freely. If knowledge lies within our mind, it will lose its meaning. To live and enjoy a beautiful and meaningful life, let us keep sharing our knowledge. Once again, thank you all for your support and love so far. The best thing about understanding the biological aspect of any process is that once we understand the science behind it, we will be able to adjust any conditions, any growing conditions and any climatic conditions and elements and we can tackle between the different difficulties in using different kinds of fish, different ponds and different plants. All these can be then considered and a tailor fit design can be carried out for your systems. So let us all start growing sustainably and naturally as we need more resilient systems. May all of your activities be fruitful. May your knowledge increase through observation and learn from the mistakes. And may all of us share our experiences to grow more, to go green. All the best.